Welcome to this episode of Orthodontics in Summary. Today's podcast is looking at impacted teeth and the timing with respect to their management. This was an excellent lecture given by the giant Stella Choshu and Adrian Becker at this year's AAO. Just to recap, the podcast is an opinion piece and may not be 100% representative of the original lecture and is the opinion piece of myself and the Orthodontics and Summary team. So back to the lecture. So there were two key components when it came to how the timing affects the management of these teeth. The first is the eruptive potential of the tooth and the second is the root development and how it has an effect when it comes to our interventions. Starting off looking at the eruptive potential. So here the key principle is the maximum eruptive potential of a tooth lies within the two-third to three-quarter formation of the tooth. Now that has two implications to it. The first is the ideal time for interceptive treatment. It is just before this ideal eruptive potential. So we're looking at the half to two thirds root formation to counter interceptive treatment. When it comes to orthodontic traction, we want to time the... Next, Stella and Adrian gave a number of scenarios. They start off with the most common, the impacted maxillary canine, and advised the ideal time to intervene is a dental age of nine to 10. The interceptive treatment can be carrying out extractions of the primary canines, the primary first molars, RME and distalization. They spoke about the prognosis of canines that are impacted becomes uncertain as age increases and this early adolescent period for applying our traction is the ideal time to do it. How about other teeth? Well, they looked at maxillary central incisors and I really like this argument they put forward. They spoke about the ideal time being between seven to eight. They spoke about the pros and cons of both early and late intervention. So if we go earlier than seven, well actually things are much likely to develop with respect to our spontaneous eruption without any intervention being needed. But they spoke about the surgical morbidity, the risk of damage to adjacent structures is greater the younger the patient is. If we leave it till after the age of eight, well then we're less likely to create surgical morbidity, but actually the spontaneous eruptive potential of these teeth is then diminished and becomes less predictable. They developed the argument further and then spoke about the root formation associated with central incisors. If there is an obstruction, yes, we want to get in between the dental ages of seven to eight. However, if there's an obstruction that's going to cause a dilaceration of the upper incisor, actually want to get in earlier on between the ages of seven to six to seven. Now, the idea here is that if the root is half formed or less, we can remove that obstruction and prevent that dilaceration from developing in the first place. Next, they describe the impacted premolar tooth. I mentioned that what should we do when we see these impacted premolars when the roots haven't fully formed? Well, actually what Adrian and Stella spoke about is that an open apex is a sign for developing root formation, but the chronology may well be disrupted. They may just require some time for that root to then develop. And it's something that we should keep an eye on. When it came to the general principles of obstructions, the idea is to remove those obstructions as early as possible. But orthodontic traction should be delayed, both with respect to the root formation, but also to allow bony infill to take place into the region. If we don't respect the biological healing that takes place post-surgery, actually we risk the loss of gingiva and alveolar support for these teeth. When it comes to looking at specific developments of the root, they spoke about the hooked apex, specifically to do with the upper canine teeth and how actually a hooked apex is three to four times more likely to occur with an impacted canine. And overall, impacted canines tend to have shorter roots by 2.3 millimeters, according to a Carroll study from 2021. However, the overall volume tends not to be unaffected for impacted canines due to the presence of the hook, which is there. The prevalence of the severity of it tends to increase with age. So getting in earlier when it comes to both our interceptive treatment and our traction will reduce the occurrences taking place. Next up was the topic of impacted teeth and asymmetries. And this was a new one for me and both Stella and Adrian explained this in a really succinct way and was the best bit of the lecture for me. So they explored how impacted teeth can have effect on a facial and dental asymmetry. They explored the statistics behind this. So when it comes to chin asymmetries with impacted teeth, they can cause a 52% asymmetry com compared to the normal ratios of 14%. Occlusal, occlusal cancer almost four times more likely to occur. And what was found is that the delay in dental treatment or management of the impaction resulted in an increasing occlusal cancer occurring. 
So this then points us towards earlier intervention taking place for our patients. After treatment, what I loved about this is that they spoke that the asymmetry does not self-correct. Actually, in the formation period of the impaction, an asymmetry has occurred. Now, only with treatment appropriate to manage the asymmetry will it correct. But in itself, we are only able to limit the asymmetry through carrying out early intervention. I think this is a really powerful message by two leading people within the field of impacted teeth and orthodontics, and to hear their frank and honest advice about it. And this was one of my favorite lectures from the AAO. It was great to see both Adrian Becker and Sir Choshu back onto the circuit, and I look forward to seeing them speaking next time on this topic. A quick recap from me. So for the last couple of weeks, I've been fortunate to go to the benefit meeting with Bendit Wilms over in Germany, and also to see the wonderful Roxana Petru over in Romania. I'll be posting review blogs on both of those journeys that I've been on. Look forward to seeing those on the website. And as always, please do subscribe and look forward to the next episode.